how are you today? Oh, wait, are we telling jokes? Hey, what do you get when you cross a centipede with a parrot? Uh, I don't know. A walkie-talkie! <laughs> That's ridiculous. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this session where we'll be talking about inspiring new generations of technology makers with Make Code for Microbit. My name is Lizzie Riffle, and I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Make Code team. I'm so excited that joining me is Johnny Austin, CTO, and Katie Henry, head of North America from the Microbit Education Foundation. Hey, I'm Johnny. Um, I am the chief technology officer at the Microbit Educational Foundation. I've been uh, involved in the organization since we came out of a, a project started by the BBC and 30 other partners, including Microsoft, way back in 2015, where we gave a million BBC microbits into UK schools and helped kickstart a kind of computing teaching uh, change, sea change in the UK. And since then, the, the Microbit Foundation has helped take the product around the rest of the world. And I am Katie. It's nice to be here with all of you. I look after North America for the Microbit I'm a former middle school STEAM teacher and very passionate about the power of helping all students to create technology. And I'm excited to be here today. Amazing, thank you guys. And for those who aren't familiar, can you give us a little bit of an overview of what the Microbit is? So the Microbit is really a pocket size computer and it does these two buttons on the front, an A button and a B button, 25 LEDs and these nice little places for your alligator clips. So you can clip on some extensions, you can use paper clips, you can use headphones. There are so many ways to connect into these just with found objects around your home. Uh, but what you also can do with this is connect it to one of 250 accessories just by clicking it into place with this edge connector. I would say don't rush to the accessories though, because on the back of your microbit, you have loads of sensors right away to be playing with. Uh, you have a magnetometer, you have an accelerometer to detect motion. You have a thermostat, so you can take temperature readings. And you'll also see up here at the top, you have the reset button, a place to plug in your battery pack, and a place for your USB cord. But right up here, you'll notice this little zigzag line for, a, it's a radio a radio antenna, so that you can pair your microbit uh, to other, through Bluetooth connection, or you can pair microbits together so that microbits can wirelessly communicate um, in your classroom. So it's a pretty powerful little device. Uh, like I said, you can though take it, I'll, I'll switch to the, the real version here. You can click this into a lot of different types of accessories though, making instruments, wearable technology, flying drones. There's really a lot you can do with it. Amazing. Um, and can you talk a little bit more about uh, what is the benefit of teaching computing with the physical device? Sure. Well, you know, I think there are just so many different types of learners that come into our classrooms. They Some learn best up and mus moving with music. Um, they learn with other people. Some learn best alone and with a book. And when you introduce a physical tool like a microbit, you really can tap into all of those types of learning. So students who like to work alone, students who like to work with others, they have this device now that they can build with, they can talk about, they can create with, and they can share with others. It really brings the programming that's happening in your class to a whole new level to reach all students in a new way. I, I think to follow on from that, one of the things that we worked really hard on with the microbit was helping take something that has in the past been quite frustrating in classrooms and designed something totally focused on the needs of educators. So not only do we have this really tangible, physical, interactive experience that people can take and show, show to their friends, show to their family, but we've also put a huge amount of effort on the device and working with Microsoft and the MakeCode team on making instantly interactive and, and work really, really seamlessly. So we try and make sure that everybody's first experience of computing with the microbit is success. It's something exciting. It's something that, that works and they're really proud of. And that, you know, I'm from a tech background, that's pretty rare. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's really common that your first experience uh, of computing is, you know, compiling something and it not working and going, what's wrong? Second thing doesn't work. Second thing doesn't work. Third thing doesn't work. So I'm um, making sure that the whole package of the microbit works really smoothly and just has all the things that are needed to make it work in a classroom has been essential to the foundation and the partnership around it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, just having something that actually works. I feel like that's often the most frustrating part when it comes to computer science is when you can't figure things out and you just want to make fun, cool projects. So that's awesome. Um, 
And I know you've just made a big announcement um, about a new version of the Microbit. Can you tell everyone who's listening a little bit more about Microbit V2? Sure, yeah. So we wanted to make sure that all the people that have learned how to use a Microbit and built lessons and resources and got projects will be able to take the latest Microbit and do everything they could do with the original, but also take it to new exciting levels. So that involves adding sound, music, speech, and touch. So this is the front of the new Microbit. It looks basically like the Microbit, but you'll notice we've got a touchable logo here. And this is the back of the new Microbit. And that's where things start. You start to see the difference. When Katie was holding up her giant Microbit, you might um, have seen that you know all the things were labeled. We've kept that. So we're explaining on the back of the Microbit what everything is. And right in the middle here is a speaker. At the back, you'll see you've got a microphone and a, an LED on the front or a, an indicator on the front that the microphone is recording or listening. So just putting the two of them side by side, you can see we've got touch sensitive logo, this microphone indicator, and we've actually made it easier to connect things into that edge connector. If you want to do conductive thread or just twisting wire around, those notches make it much easier just to get stuff in and get it uh, kind of secured properly. On the back, you can see where we've added the microphone. We've got a new power indicator because the, the new micro bit has a low power mode. It can actually go to sleep. And that's really useful for people in classrooms. So if you've got a whole bunch of microbits and they're all making some sound, that's brilliant. The kids love the sound. But if you just want them to be quiet for a moment, you can push and hold the power button on your micro bit and that will put it to sleep and it'll stop making noise. And then a little bit on this microphone indicator. We, we think it's really important as we you know, have a device in classrooms that's capable of recording information and sound that we're really kind of open up a conversation about what that means and, and really explicit about the privacy implications of these kind of listening devices. So we've got a really clear indicator on the front of the micro bit that tells you when the microphone is on. I guess it might be worth if I just switch to my desk camera now. Okay, go for it. So here's, here's the micro bit um, and I'm going to plug one in and just show you we've got we've got a couple of little programs. This one's very silly but I love it. This is listening to my voice and making a mouth shape that should match match what I'm saying. So if I go and, and it turns out that, you know, once you see a micro bit doing this, you start talking to it. Katie said you start treating it like a baby. And that's exactly right. I was going ba 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 ba. So you start making silly noises. And and the fun thing about about the micro bit is that now it can it can actually make noises back. So whereas before you could make silly noises as much as you liked it wouldn't make any noises back. So here's a program which just has a few, few little happy noises. Um, that's a sad noise. Aww. I know, I know. And, and actually you know, <laughs> part of the process for us was making sure, you know, the, the micro bit was designed so carefully to allow people to form an emotional connection with it as well. It's designed to look friendly, to have a face. And when we added the speaker, we, we didn't want to break that. We didn't want it just to be crude mechanical sounds. So an important part of this is, that is that that is the sound of a heart and mm. and that is really sad i'm sorry micro bit so these these sounds are um you know really important in helping people do something with the device that that feels human and feels you know like it's part of their life so this one if i push the we've also got the touch sensitive logo now so if i push this you can see while i'm pushing the logo it's responding to the sound level um right and then once i stop pushing it, it stops I'll just turn it turn it on so you can hear the hello noise and I'll show you that power button thing. So that's it saying hello. If I turn it over, you can see push and hold. This LED is going to fade out slowly to tell me that the, the board is going down and then it'll turn off. And that means the micro bits asleep. And then it blinks to tell you because it's on USB, it's in standby mode. So I could still do drag and drop programming like I'm used to doing from my computer to program this micro bit and it would wake straight up and run my new program you tell me about some programs or resources that educators can take advantage to teach Microbit to their students? Absolutely. And you will find all the little introductory videos you need when you're starting something new with your students. I love this uh, two minute video here, introduction to the BBC Microbit. It goes over the same features, well, most of the features that Johnny just demonstrated and helps your students to begin to learn about the device. Uh, here on this uh, column over here on the side, you'll notice that it walks you through your very first steps. So when you're opening this device for the first time and saying, what are, what's the first thing I do? We've got it here for you, these first three. How do you download the program? How do you get it onto your device? 
this could be the first activity that you do with your students. But really, once you've done these first few steps that take less than 10 minutes, you're ready for these projects. And I love these projects because you'll find over 55 of them that work using the simulator in MakeCode. MakeCode is an amazing environment for your students to get started programming because of the simulator here. And we give you these step-by-step -step tutorials for your students to begin learning how to program their microbits. So if you're thinking about scaffolding classroom instruction, you, you could use these activities as mini lessons and then open your students up to some more uh, open-ended design challenges. Um, for example, here with the do your bit challenge, we will have more resources uh, continuing to come to this project area, but you'll find resources aligned to health and wellness, climate action, life on land, life below water. These are open-ended design challenges that students can take on independently uh, to begin solving real world problems um, next if you're looking for some more in-depth resources check out the lessons page here you'll find units of instruction aligned to these topics each lesson is about a 45 minute lesson and they're micro chunked so you can see exactly what's happening in the lesson plan you can pull out just the parts you need um, but if i back up a page and i go back to the lessons what you can also do is look for this little green icon it'll show you exactly where the microbit activity is. So if you're just looking for the code and you need that activity, as the, as the educator, you can come right to this tab, get the code you need, and you're ready to demo in your lesson. So educators really love these lessons um, because of how they're laid out, and they're all free. They're always here at microbit.org. Great, Katie, thank you so much. I know educators are gonna find that be super helpful. Um, and could you, um, while I have you, show us a little bit how uh, MakeCode and Microbit work together? Yeah, uh, amazing. Uh, so I think we've talked a little bit about the new features on Microbit and the, the Microbit V2, but one of the things I'd like to show you is how easy it is to use MakeCode on any version of the Microbit. So I've got an example program here. You can see this is the this is the MakeCode editor. So uh, we can we might might as well start a new program just to give you a, a quick view of how how make code works and how simple it is to see something with the micro bit. So I'm going to click new project here, but there are lots of um lots of tutorials and other things that you can do in the make code home screen to find out about how to use the micro bit. You can see a list of all of my recent pro projects here. So you can see some of my days spent testing things. Then I made that little V2 overview program. These are my past programs. So if I if I create a brand new project. So we'll give it a name. So we'll call it Make Code is Awesome. Uh, and Katie talked about the simulator and how that helps people understand. I think one of the things that simulator does is give you really instantaneous feedback about the way the micro bit is going to work. If you've um, if you've never used Make Code before, this is the the way the view breaks down. We've got simulator here on the left hand side. We've got a toolbox of all the different blocks that you can use, and this is really helpful for students to understand what the device is capable of. If you didn't know that Microbit had radio capability, well, there's a reminder here, and you can explore what the blocks do. So we're going to do a, a really, um, we're going to do a really basic program where we show something on the screen when we push a button. So on button A pressed, show a heart. This is going to work. And and the great thing about what Microsoft and the Foundation have done working together is that this is going to work on a micro bit, an original micro bit. And if you take the same program and put it on a micro bit V2, it's going to work in exactly the same way. But if we want to do some something that you, you, you for example, can only do on a micro bit V2 because it uses one of those new V2 features like detect the loud sound, I'm going to drag this block in. And you'll see on the left hand side, the simulator that shows a picture of my micro bit, it's going to change to show a micro bit V2. We can even simulate the sound input. So we've got this slider here. If I make the sound really loud, then that icon shows. So that's a fantastic way to explore what the device can do. Awesome. Thank you both so much for taking the time to speak with me. Um, and I'm excited for everyone to be able to get their hands on Microbit V2 and play around with it with my code. Thank you very much for having us on, on this uh, webinar, talk, whatever it is, this session. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining. Bye. Oh, bye. See you next bye, time. Bye, guys.